All right, so I have major component parts all welded together. I have my sketch open here. I can see where I've met those expectations and where I've, I've still um, have some work to do. Uh, for instance, I don't have any kind of swamp plant on the back, even though I've got these nice spikes. Um, I don't have any kind of coral or kangaroo tail. I have to address that so it doesn't look so clearly just like an alligator tail in my mind. And I haven't done the ears. And then I also notice that with my addition of this pine cone element, this really cool pine cone, I've completely lost that back leg. So I want to put that back in. Um, so little things I can do is more reference. And remember, when you're finding reference, you want to search Google Image Search tools larger than 8 megapixels. And instead of a, a lily pad, um, I thought a dragon fruit would be perfect. So I found some good reference for that. I also found some other types of dragon fruit, like these yellow kinds. And with food, food is a great thing to use in creature composites even in landscape sometimes, because there's so many high quality photos of food by designers online. Because of food blogs, because of just people blogging their lunches, things like that. And they're, they're interesting organic textures. So I found a few. Um, I also want to do the ears. And to keep the kind of pine cone theme, I'm going to bring in these little tiny conifer seed things, almost look like walnuts. Bring those in. Those are going to be my two ears. And I love it when I have reference that's mostly on a, a bright background, because then all I have to do is duplicate it or ras and rasterize it. Notice I'm not even cutting them out yet. Turn off the smart layer, go to image adjustments, play with levels and really brighten them up, especially the midtones and especially the highlights. You can see in the histogram here, this shows you what the dark pixels are and what the light pixels are. And you want a nice balanced histogram. So I can push them right to the edges. And that allows me to just use the magic wand and basically just select out and erase the background pretty easily with contiguous turned on, even at the, at the default tolerance of 32. And then I can hold down shift and add to that the shadow colors. <clears throat> Something else of note is that your image files are getting pretty large as you bring in all this reference. Right now my file is 2.21 gigabytes, which on some computer operating systems is too large a file to save. Files need to be generally um, fewer than two gigabytes to save. So cropping will help and then getting rid of these smart layers like we did with the, um, with the landscape project will help. So once I know I have my rasterized, any of these layers that have a smart icon, I can just delete. And because they're all really large, high resolution reference, that's gonna save a lot of memory and will help the computer run a little bit smoother as well. Now, if any are open still, you want to make sure you don't need them. But these ones that are closed, I've already used them. And I'm good. So that brings it down to under 500 megabytes without costing me any ability. Okay, now I want to bring these ears up above. I'm going to use Command right bracket as a shortcut for that. I'm going to move, move them even above the head group. And because they're two separate ears, I'm going to separate them into different layers. And often you have to do this. You have to take your, your reference and cut it into separate assets. So I do that by duplicating, or I can actually do Command X. Command X, just like in a Word file, it deletes, but it also copies it onto the clipboard. So then if I do Command V, it will paste it into a new layer. And then I can move these two ear shapes separately. First thing, I'm going to play with transforming them. Informed by my sketch, but not a slave to my sketch. And I'm really going to play with warping these and making them my own. 
because they're meant to be organic and not not rigid. I'm working them a little bit bigger than than they'll be at the at the end, but I like the kind of uh, furry texture they have, even though they're they're a type of seed cone. So there's one. Now that I have an idea of that, I can move this one around. I also cropped a little bit of my extra space to save memory because now that I've bolted everything together onto the chassis of this design, I don't need all of that extra gray space, which just takes up memory, but is very helpful when you're still moving things around. And I want them to sit under this ridge. Okay, so now that I've got the ears, now I need to sync them down below. So I'm going to do command left bracket and sync it below that ridge. Let's see. And I want to sync it into the head group. So I need to open up my head group to sync it below some of it. And this one. I'm going to want to erase out some of that back. So same skills we've been doing for the landscape. I still have a soft edged eraser. It's only at 53% opacity, but if I hit it multiple times, I can still erase where I need to erase. And because I can feel the reaction of my computer slowing down a little bit, I'm going to save because I've added this new reference, which is really helpful. I like how it's kind of a cross between a rabbit, an armadillo, a lizard, Komodo dragon, lots of different things. All right. Now I can use my move tool. Remember our shortcut? I'm on the eraser, but any... Any tool I'm on, I can hold down Option. Sorry, I can hold down Command, <laughs> and it will change to the Move tool. And that can get me to another layer. There we go. So if there's more I need to erase, I can select that layer and then cut in front of it. All right. Same thing here. Where things overlap, you want to be careful. So I don't want to have that gray there. I need it connected, so I'm going to select that ear and I'm going to move it down. Maybe play with warping it just a little bit more. Kind of connect it into the anatomy a little bit more. Taper this one. You have to kind of see what works best for your reference. See if it's actually an improvement. Eh, I kind of liked it better this way. Let me just tilt it a little. There's other transforms you could try, um, such as perspective, to get these to kind of sit back more. I could try that. Or to come forward a little bit more. And then there's always skew and distort. All right. Now I want to bring in some of the back pieces. I've got the ears. So the spinal ridge. I have to look at transitions now. And even though I was dismissive of this before, 
it's a beautiful piece of reference. So I'm going to give myself lots of overlap from the pieces I want. So I think I just want these pieces here. big weird looking shell thing, which is another type of pine cone. Duplicate it. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the smart layer. Right? And the reason I need this is as transition between these layers, this one and the pine cone one. Notice I'm not getting rid of this yet, not cutting this out perfectly yet, but you see that those feel stretched a little bit, and maybe I can make that work. But if I can get another uh, surface to transition, that's a stronger option. Gives more complexity to my whole design. But again, we're on a deadline always. The client needs something, and I don't have all the time in the world to play with it. So yeah, I maybe can make that work, but you see how much it dips in there? Doing a slightly finer job cutting out because these are hard surfaces. But then behind the ears, I don't have to be so careful because the ears are covering it up. And that's why we don't cut, up, cut around the edges until we absolutely need to. Okay, so there's that, but now if I bring in this new reference, there it is, and I sink it underneath, underneath the ear, I kind of like that a little bit better as a ridge. has a little bit more distinction. But there are some issues. So now I'm going to transition this, cut out around it, leave a little bit of that shadow as overlap. Shadows are always very helpful. Lighting is always tricky. Cutting out first with the lasso, which gives me a very sharp edge. And then I can come in with a softer edge when I need to blend. So I'm using my tablet, trying to do a pretty precise cutout without having to zoom in too much. And if I ever need to add or subtract from my lasso selection, I can use Option and Shift to modify it. And I'll do it in sections like this. That looks pretty good. Where it overlaps here. I know I'm going to have to do some soft erasing with the leg and the fur, because fur is a soft texture. But this is better than trying to use the magic wand, because there's so many similar colors here. And I don't want little speckles of debris anywhere. So we're we're doing the finishing work now. Got the car all bolted together on the assembly line. Now we're, we're welding out the seams or uh, buffing out the seams, grinding out for the final paint job, making textures match. Okay, so now some of the soft erasing, soft edge, lower opacity, start to transition into these shadows a little bit. Let that spike show. Soften these. If you go too far, just hit Command Z. Sometimes you have to zoom in more. Shortcut for that is Command Plus. To zoom out, Command Minus. It's helpful, it's all in the same place. We're going to do some dodging and burning to match all of this lighting but I'm not there yet. 